Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how I complete an illustration from beginning to end. So to get this going, this is a time lapse because I have discovered that while streaming on Twitch, no one actually wants to watch the full real time process of how an illustration comes together. So time lapse it is. And we're going to start with this particular drawing was done in Procreate. So for this piece of Bakken, it is going to be used as a little insert piece for the Shinju Handbook Update 2023, but it's also going to be a variant cover for Shinju Universe, maybe two, maybe issue three. So in Procreate, it keeps track of how long you've been working on a piece. And for this particular piece, I made 5,000 451 strokes for a total of five hours and 29 minutes to finish just the line art. That's it. Just the black and white line art. So how did I get started and how did I get to the end? Okay, so here we go with the time lapse. I went to Figurosity to find the pose that I was looking for. It's a great site for 3D character poses. I will link them down in the description below. Not sponsored, but if they'd like to. Okay, so I found the pose I wanted. Uh, Bakken is a cult leader in my comic book, so I wanted a pose of him like welcoming you to his flock. But when I found the pose I wanted, I was able to import that into Procreate and I began sketching my lines over that to create the character of Bakken. As you can see, I'm fleshing it out, I'm figuring it out how I want everything to go, getting his costume figured out. I actually forgot his costume. Luckily, I had the Shinju Universe Handbook Update 2023 readily available. I could reference his costume. So at this point, I'm just getting the costume figured out and getting everything laid out exactly where I want before I start adding in all of the details. And he's coming together nicely, figuring things out. And then I actually fill in the blacks on a separate layer. Why? I don't actually have an answer for that. I just do. I keep my main lines on one layer. I keep the details on a second layer, fill in the blacks on a third layer. And then on the fourth layer, I actually do the thicker outline around the character. I honestly do not have an answer as to why I do it that way. I just do. So here I am. Uh, starting to figure out where I want the details to go in. I have to rein it in a little bit because I wanted to do slightly more details on this fabric, but I was realizing that there was really no need to because I knew I wanted him backlit. I knew I wanted a strong light source from behind him. Just was not sure if I wanted it coming from the floor or coming from above, but I knew it was going to be from behind him. So I didn't want to put too much detail into him because I was going to keep him kind of darkened down a bit. From that strong back light. So here just more figuring out how to draw the texture of the cloak and the rags. So Bakken wants his followers to shun the modern world and that is why they live underground mostly in these caves and these tunnels which has led them to having to wear these full body coverings. That's why they have the goggles their eyes are used to the kind of the darker environment and they have full body suits protect them from the sun. And then the rags uh, just help dissipate the heat when they're out patrolling around the entrance, allowing people into their fortification. So here I am just trying to figure out how to draw the textures of the rags, of the clothes, without going completely overboard unnecessarily. I think I finally have a good handle on how I'm look, getting the mask and you know, making sure everything lined up the way I want. And then the wrist wraps. I don't know why the wrist wraps gave me such trouble. I have absolutely no idea. The wrist wraps, just for some reason, I could not draw. Oh, a fun fact of this, the majority of this drawing was done in the front seat of my truck while I was waiting to go to work. Every morning before work, I would sit there in the truck and work on this. That's the beauty of the iPad. Wherever you are at, you can work on your creation. And then now we're in Photoshop and then creating the background was actually created in Illustrator. Those are all symbols from the various sects in my 
comic book universe. I wanted to incorporate all of those into the piece because while Bakken is his own separate sect, he still follows the teachings of Tenja. Here we go, just blocking everything out, doing flat colors. This is the most tedious part of the entire project is doing flat colors. What's very important in Photoshop using the polygonal lasso tool set to zero anti-aliasing with zero threshold on the magic wand tool will allow you to select your colors. You don't want any bleed over. So slowly, slowly, slowly doing flat colors, continuing the flatting process. It takes so long, or it feels like it anyway. This first bit from Twitch is actually two and a half hours condensed down into eight minutes or something, or something like that. It's sped up at like 800%, 900%, something. So just trying to get all the details mapped out. You want to break down the costume into its individual parts using separate colors for everything, unless it's the same part of the costume. So like on Bakken, his little neck wrap is a separate color. And then his shirt and skirt type thing are the same color. And technically his belt is the same color, but for color flatting, I made the belt and over flap separate colors. So when I select them to render, I don't get all of them at one time, which is what you don't want. And for some reason, Photoshop was not cooperating with using the masks. For some reason, when I had the mask turned on, it just would not render that part. I have to desil, you know, turn a little, cook a little eyeball and turn it off, turn it on. It was just not cooperating at all that day. So here with the background colors, I was not sure how I wanted it to really go. I thought about just leaving it super dark gray and on the black background, so it kind of fades, where it's really difficult to tell that it's on that. The, there, there is a background design. Just keeping everything dark but as you'll see later on i talked myself out of that it was just it just didn't it did not work at all i wanted a little more vibrancy to it even though bakken's world is not very vibrant i still wanted to bring that to the character piece so here's more more rendering of the of the fabrics nothing crazy just uh but when i color I make my flat colors the darkest part of the character and so that when I lasso off my brush is typically set to screen mode with the opacity is like at 60% and the pressure is at 40% or something something like that it's never 100 and 100 I always lower it like 50 50 40 60 something like that so now we are on a separate day on twitch and as you can see, I've mucked around with the background quite a bit off stream. I was just messing around, trying different hues. In Photoshop, if you just hit Control U or Command U on a Mac, it will bring up your hue saturation sliders. And I use those all of the time. And you'll be able to tweak your colors in a much better way than just using the color picker. With hue saturation, I was messing around with the background, what kind of tone I wanted and then messing around with the lights that I had drawn at Procreate and then imported in. On top of the entire Bakken figure, I have a color layer. And it's just a purplish color right now, set to, I believe it is actually color. Instead of normal, I believe it's set to color with the, like a 40% opacity or something like that. So that way it ties Bakken's colors into the background colors to make it more uniform. Like it's one scene instead of me just coloring straight tones. Now I'm adding glows because he's backlit. You see the glow around like a little halo is what I was going for. But again, I still do not have the final color scheme in mind. I'm just adding all of this in and then counting on figuring it out in the end. For color holds, when you color the your line art in a comic book, it's called a color hold. So there I was just selecting the lines I wanted to color and moving them to their own layer with the transparency lock. So I could apply color to just those lines. Important for printing later. If you're doing your book digitally only, none of that matters. But if you plan on printing your book, it's a very important step. So here are just more glow, adding more of the backlight. I kind of like that little pinkish purple here. It doesn't make any sense with the color of the background lighting that I actually have going on here. 
but I kind of like the way it looks. That's the beauty of digital art is that you can try out different things without ruining your project. So here we go, more hue saturation sliders combined with the color hold white. Oh, there's lens flare, gotta have lens flare. It doesn't really make any sense why there would be a lens flare reflection off the front of his mask when the light's coming from behind, but hey, it just looks cool. Adds a little something to it. So more hue saturation sliders, trying to figure out the best way to have the light coming through those designs. It's supposed to be like a window, kind of like a window thing. And again, color holds on the background and then a round bakken. Eventually I figure out I did not want the color hold to go all the way down his body. I think I stopped right around his arms, I believe. And it's just a matter of figuring out what is the best color to accentuate that bright light coming from behind on those solid black lines. And you're more just playing around how to make this work. Because <laughs> secret, don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just making it up as I go along and going with what feels right. Secrets out. There we go, and there is the finished piece. A nice little close-up zoom of how Bakken turned out. Really proud of him. He looks really nice. He looks really welcoming and inviting to his home. And that is how the Bakken illustration came together. Started with a reference from Figurosity, sketch in Procreate, line art in Procreate using the technical pen tools, what I use for everything, light pen for the background, then brought into Photoshop and used mostly a, one single brush on screen mode with 50% opacity and 50% flow. That's it. That is 99% of my workflow. This time lapse is 14 and a half minutes, but in reality, that is 11 hours to complete the Bakken illustration, which is for me, incredibly quick. I'm just slow at this. If you have any questions on techniques on how to achieve certain effects, leave a comment below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.